Okay, good morning, everyone. Just before I speak, um, we've got the magazine Light for Last Days is at the printers at the moment, and it should be ready for mailing out next month, not tomorrow, but week on Monday. So if you would like to come and help us do that. Uh, also, I'm getting ready the uh, This Month in Prophecy talk, which I'm hoping to complete this week, and we're planning to do the talk, uh, to record the talk on Sunday evening, next Sunday evening at about 6.30, so it won't be a Sunday evening service, but um, we will be having the church open then, and I'll be giving that talk next Sunday evening. Um, a lot happening in the world, a lot of things happening which tie in with the Bible prophecies and the second coming of Jesus, and it seems to be accelerating all the time as we move towards the return of the Lord, and I believe that we need to know about these things. Last week, Trevor spoke, and he spoke about the difference between the fullness of the Gentiles. Times, is it on? Yeah. Uh, the times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentiles. So I'm going to talk about that today, and I'll explain what it means. So let's just have a word of prayer as we come to the scriptures. Lord, we thank you that we can meet in your name, thank you for your word. Pray that you bless me, bless the congregation as I speak, and help us, Lord, to understand these things and guide me by your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the fullness of the Gentiles and the times of the Gentiles. Now, Trevor threw out a line last week, I don't know if you picked it up, but he said that these are two different events. And that set me thinking. I thought, is that true? Is that interesting? And uh, I went for a walk on Wednesday over Totteridge Fields, which is a nice place to go to if you like countryside in North London, and basically on my own. And I was going around, I felt the Lord was showing me certain things about this particular subject, so I'm going to share it with you today. So, times of the Gentiles and the fullness of the Gentiles. Although it's about Gentiles, it's also all about Israel, and it ties in with God's purposes with Israel. And if you read the scriptures, you can see clearly that God says that uh, Israel has a special place in God's plan, and the return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel is a sign of the second coming of Jesus. Psalms, it says, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. So when you see something happening in the Middle East, Jews going back to Israel, and it's a sign of the soon coming of Jesus the Messiah. So let's have a look at this subject of these two scriptures, uh, one in Romans chapter 11, uh, which uh, Trevor was speaking on last week, particularly concerning God's dealings with Israel in the last days. And this verse, in verse 25, says, I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own opinion. The blindness has come, happened, ha blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion, then he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Uh, in the NIV it says, Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in, and in this way all Israel will be saved. Uh, so we have a concept here of some kind of hardening of heart, amongst Israel, uh, Jewish people, towards Jesus, until something significant happens. Paul says that there will be individual Jews who will be saved, as like himself, but as far as national Israel is concerned, there will be a kind of cutting off, and God will no longer be dealing in the way he was under the old covenant with national Israel, but with a new body, which is the body of Christ, Jesus the Messiah. doesn't mean that God's finished with Israel. It means that now God is mediating his covenant through the Ecclesia, which is those who are called out from Jews and Gentiles into the body of Christ, in other words, what we call the believing church. Um, he says that uh, there'll be a hardening of heart amongst Jewish people, which sadly has happened, that we have Jewish people who believe in Jesus. The majority don't believe in Jesus, and the rabbis tell Jewish people definitely not to believe in Jesus. And according to Jewish traditions, Jesus is for the Goyim, for the Gentiles, not for us. Now, we believe, of course, that Jesus is for the Jewish people. In fact, that the Christian faith is based upon uh, the roots of Israel and that one of the other problems which has happened in our 
development of church history is that the Gentile church has for the most part forgotten its Jewish roots and therefore alienated itself from the root which supports it, which is Israel. And part of God's purpose in the end times is to bring these together and to bring uh, Gentiles to the understanding of Israel, but also to bring Jewish people in the end to the recognition that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Now, in this passage uh, in Romans, it says that the hardening of heart will come until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, and so all Israel will be saved. So there will be a full number of Gentiles who come in, of non-Jews who come into the body of Messiah. And then there's going to be a movement of salvation towards Israel, which will reach its climax with the coming of the Deliverer. It says, the Deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And at the end of this process, uh, all Israel will be saved. Now, I agree with what Trevor said last week. He said that all Israel will be saved means that at this point, uh, there will only be saved Israelites or saved Jewish people uh, who will be left because it will be after this return of Jesus Christ when he will set up his kingdom with those who have been redeemed and who are saved Israelites uh, ruling from Jerusalem. And the quote here is from Isaiah 59. And if you go back to Isaiah 59, you'll see that um, in the context, Isaiah 59 is actually speaking about a time when Israel is oppressed by an overwhelming enemy, and the Lord raises up a standard against this enemy and saves Israel. In fact, Isaiah 59, verse 19, it says, When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. The Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who... Turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. So this speaks about a time coming when the Lord's going to come to save Israel from an enemy coming in like a flood, which corresponds also to the second coming of Jesus the Messiah. Now if you put all this together, in this verse you have an order of events which takes place. First of all, the fullness of the Gentiles coming in, whatever that means, we'll talk a bit about more of that in a moment. Then the Lord moves upon the Jews who go through a time of trouble, but are rescued from it by the coming of the Deliverer, the Redeemer, who is Yeshua, and he comes to save those who turn to the Lord in repentance and faith in himself. 